What is up, Ravens flop? Huge shout out for your support for the 410 Sports Talk. James and Glenn are the best in the business. They are killing it right now. They love talking Raven talk. Make sure you go subscribe to their channel. Let's go Ravens. Big trust. Welcome in everybody to another episode of 410 Sports Talk. I'm James Haskell, along with my co-host Glenn Martin, and we're here to talk about the Ravens a uh, former, first, well, uh, first round draft pick a few years ago, Dafe Owe, um, and his uh, his season thus far, as mm -hmm. you can see by the comments, or not the comments, excuse me, the title. Um, you know his uh, his role in this defense is 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 morphing. Let's say mm -hmm. it nicely, right, Glenn? That's a uh, nice way to put it. Yep. Yeah, and so let's talk about why. Let's talk about what we could be. You know, what could be the reasons for that? Uh, but before we get into that, uh, take a second, hit the subscribe button, uh, turn on notifications. And give us a like if you're enjoying the videos. And, of course, leave your comments below if you um, feel so inclined. But, Glenn, what's going on with the uh, with uh, Adafe Owe, who a lot of people were really excited about his breakout this season and, you know, the jump that he was going to make. But kind of what's what's been going on so far? Yeah, this was supposed to be his year uh, after being relatively new to football, uh, at least from a typical player standpoint. Uh, they thought this would be the year. I mean, everyone did. I mean, Adafe Owe's got all the mm -hmm. physical traits. Uh, and they thought, you know, everyone thought this would be the year he kind of puts things together, especially when you consider, you know, how light we were in the outside linebacker room, at least when the season started. Certainly had a all the opportunity in the world to to go out there and 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 kind of make a name for himself. And and he had the snap count. If you look at uh, weeks one through five, he he played eighty one percent in week one, eighty two percent of the defensive snaps in week two, eighty six percent in week three. 95% of the defensive snaps in week four mm. and in week five, 87% of the defensive snaps. But right after week five, we started to see the return, uh, not just the return of some players, but also acquisitions uh, from outside the franchise, namely Jason Pierre Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, we also saw some other guys who are you know now injured uh, that are, that they've kind of cycled in and out. We had uh canard come in for a little bit. We had, you know, a bunch of guys, Stephen Means was in for, you know, the initial part of the season, then he got hurt. Um, but since, since week five, Jimbo, it's trending in the big time wrong direction. So mm -hmm. as I said, week five, 87%, uh, but then week six dropped to 57% of the defensive mm. snaps mm. week seven down to 55% week eight, 56% week nine, he played in 57% and last week, Jimbo. Last week, with Bowser two weeks off of Pup, with uh, Jason Pierre-Paul getting his legs under him after not having an offseason or preseason, he played just 40% of the defensive snaps, Jimbo. Only 23 mm. total snaps for Adafi Owe. And this is a guy who doesn't participate a ton on special teams. In fact, I think, I think he's only played in four special team snaps all season. Mm. So here you got your number one pick from two years ago. You're... You got not a ton of pass rushers. You know, you bring uh, Houston back, who's aging and was hoping to cash in and ultimately signs for less than he wanted to. Playing out of his mind. Playing way more than him. I mean, just, mm -hmm. just last week, he played 45% uh, of the snaps in the limited role, in the pass rush specialist role. He right. still had more snaps than Adafi <clears throat> Owe. We have uh, Tyus Bowser coming off of a, a pretty serious Achilles injury at, at last season's end, playing in just his second game. He registered 72% of the snaps last week, Jimbo. And Ajabo is coming back. Ajabo oh, is on it. his way. So, Jimbo, is this just a reflection of the hmm. depth, the incredible depth the Ravens are building at that spot with, with now Bowser and, and Houston and, and JPP and then Ajabo is on his way? Or is this a serious indictment on the development of just, I mean, of, of Adafi Owe. So I'm going to give you a cop out answer here, but I kind of think it's both. It's really bad timing for Adafi Owe because we are no longer insanely dependent on him. Uh, we have guys that are, that are, uh, you know, up to the task and are getting the job done. And so then the role has become a competition before it was his job. It was no one, to, you know, even look around your, you know, looking, uh, and you know, turn your shoulder and and seeing you know, there's no one next to him right now. He's got JPP, like you said, who's a career you know successful pass rusher. You got Justin Houston, who's playing outside of his mind right now, certainly mm -hmm. for his age. Um, and then Tyus Bowser, who's more of a of a of a Swiss Army knife at that role. And so, 
Um, yeah, it's it's a tough go for Adafe Owe. I think it has to do more with, but if I had to pick one, I think it has to do more with the the incredible contributions and the unexpected contributions of these vets that we've acquired. I mean, they're simply playing better football. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's it's pretty crazy thing about it because you think of a first round pick, you know, he's going into you know he's still in the infancy of his career. This is a big year for him, and he's going to trend in the right direction. Um, certainly, Glenn, I can tell you what, I'm not eating any microphone covers anytime no. soon. I mean, um, how long is it going to take to him to get to double digit for his career, Jimbo, yeah. much less uh, you his know, rookie and the, year? And of course, the, the next question will be, um, is this another Matt Judon situation? Which I think it can be thrown out the window only because this is a different system now with Mike McDonald. Yep. And we're seeing these guys get to the quarterback. But what um, we don't want to see is him leave and then have uh, 13 sacks by week, whatever right. this is, like Judon has. Right. Now, let me ask you a question to defend Adafe here. All right. All right. He had the offseason surgery. Mm-hmm. Right. So, right. So I know that that you can keep your you know, cardiovascular shape and things like that. But certainly upper body strength is important. But also, I think the biggest thing is, is simply technique. Mm-hmm. How much can you get done from a technique standpoint while you're so focused on rehab? You know, that that's I'm not trying to, to hedge in Adafe's favor here, but it's certainly something to at least consider when you're trying to be objective about the situation where you're expecting this big leap, but also being cognizant of the fact that he did have a, a, a relatively significant surgery on the shoulder, which might've limited his time to improve his technique and, and mm-hmm. things of that nature. What, what say you about that? Well, that's a, that's a good point. And I think that's valid in, a, in an excuse he could have used in the initial part of training camp and OTAs, but it, correct me if I'm wrong. He may, he played, he didn't miss any training camp. Yeah. He was, he was up. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I think he was up for some of the, the latter eight, uh, OTAs. Uh, he played in, he was here all preseason. He's been here all to this point. So I think that would be an excuse he could have used way back when. But at this point, I, I don't think there is any excuse uh, as far as not having the time to work on your technique. I mean, when I was at training camp, I saw the big fellas after practice was over. What'd they do? They followed Calais Campbell and Justin Houston right over to the individual section. And and, and there's uh, Calais Campbell going over his individual stuff still in whatever year he was in. Uh, so I don't, I don't, I'm not going to give him a pass on, on that, even though I think it's valid. And I think it would have been something he could have talked about a while back, but to this point, it's, it's not a good excuse for, for losing snaps in week 11, <laughs> in my opinion. Now I will say just from the eye test. And again, we're fans, Jimbo, we're not, uh, talent evaluators. We're not coaches. Right. We're not former coaches, but Adafe Owe simply just doesn't look like he has natural pass rush ability. He doesn't look like he can he bends the corner. He doesn't look mm-hmm. like he has explosive get off the ball. He just doesn't look like he has that at high like you bring up Matt Judon. A lot of times Matt Judon wins with just incredible effort. Like just mm-hmm. relentlessness. I don't see that from a Dafe away. Mm-hmm. I mean not to say he's loafing, but I'm just saying he doesn't have that ridiculous motor where you're like, geez, this guy plays hard. So he doesn't have ridiculous motor. He doesn't seem to have natural pass rush ability. So I'm starting to worry. I'm starting to wonder, Jimbo, if bust factor might start becoming a fat. I mean, look, I know it's early, but I mean, you're losing snaps to, I mean, Calais Campbell. How old is that guy? He played 35. 60, he played in 63% of the snaps last week. I mean, you're getting out snapped by Justin Houston. And Calais Campbell, who are in their in their mid thirties, and you're a twenty three year old first round pick. Mm-hmm. It's just no excuse. Mm-hmm. You run a four three forty, and you're getting you're getting your snaps snatched away from you by Tyus Bowser coming off an Achilles. I mean, mm. it's just it it just doesn't look good for him. And I, and it makes me wonder: is he just not fit for the Ravens system? I mean, John Harbaugh's called him more of a, a DN than an outside linebacker, and sure. I wonder if he just doesn't fit this scheme and will never fit this scheme, or if he just will never kind of unlock this pass rush that they were hoping to unlock once he yeah, got here. The thing I'll say about the scheme, I learned this a long time ago. There was a short period of time, Glenn, in my athletic glory, where uh, I had the opportunity to play on a, on a, on an Olympic development team for soccer. I was not going to the Olympics, but it was an Olympic development team. It was awesome. The reason I'm bringing it up is because I learned a ton from my coach, best coach I've ever had in my life. And one of the things he said, boys, when someone asks you what position you play, you know what you answer, Glenn? I play football. I play whatever position you want, coach. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I, that's absolutely right. So, like the scheme thing, I that's a footnote to me because at the end of the day, you put your you put your hand in the dirt, mm-hmm. you see the guy in front of you, you beat the guy in front of you, you get to the quarterback, right? That's true. Now, to to 
this is the thing that that bothered me about picking Adafe Owe um, is that we already saw this in college. No surprise, right? He's playing against better people, but you're expecting better results, right? So it, that's it's certainly a concern for me. I mean, you guys heard it here. Glenn's certainly not giving him a pass. Um, mm. I don't think I, I, I am either. Uh, but I will say this. I'm not ready to throw in the towel. I'm not ready to use the word bust. Next year, though, mm-hmm. next year is, is the end of the rope for me. After that, if it looks the same, if the Ravens start tweeting about he's leading the league in pressures and he's got zero sacks, he's leading the league in misholding penalties and he's got zero sacks, I don't want to hear any of it. Mm-hmm. Right, so I'm holding off to one more year. While I don't disagree with what you're saying, um, I don't know if I'm as worried as you are yet. I'm hoping that one more year under his belt and this doesn't become uh, a bust type scenario like like you you bring up. Because next year, look, Houston's not going to be here next year. I highly doubt it anyway. Right. I mean, he's only well, what, 33. He is, but he's got nine sacks. So holy smokes. I mean, he's going to he want a lot has, of money. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got a pick. Yeah. Right. And JPP is not going to be here. I mean, that one I feel pretty confident. And so certainly the keys are going to be given to Ajabo and to Owe. Yeah. I mean, that's their pass rush duo. But Jimbo, like I said, Houston's got nine more than more than Owe. Campbell's got four and a half mm. more than Owe. Pat Queen's got four. Justin Metabike has got three and a half. Jason Pierre Paul's only been here a few weeks. He's got two. Jeez. You know, he's got the same amount of sacks as Marlon Humphrey, Kyle mm. Hamilton. Josh Bynes, Brandon Copeland, who's only played in a, in a couple games before he got hurt. He's got yeah. two tackles. He's got the same amount of sacks as him. I mean, mm. at some point, you got to start producing. I mean, it's not even like he's setting the edge well. I mean, that's why. That's the thing that's, that's been most confusing we, to me. Yeah, we saw the re- the reason we saw the the most recent loss in snap count is because Bowser's back and Bowser's playing the run way better. He set the edge way better. Yeah, weren't you I surprised mean, to see a few times that guys were able to get around the corner when you think Adafe is probably faster than this guy on a straight line? Exactly. But somehow he's a he's a he's behind. I don't know if it's a bad angle. No I don't excuse. know if you, you kind of talked about it, the lack of like takeoff. Maybe he's got good top end speed and his takeoff isn't great. Whatever. I don't know. But yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's a bit frustrating. It's crazy. It's at, and then you start to look at that draft class, Jimbo. That first round. I mean, look, Bateman's a lot of this stuff's been out of his hands, but yeah, he's not on day, the field. I mean, and right. now your other first round picks losing snaps by the week. Yeah. I mean, well, let's not open see? that can of worms. Then we're going to start getting comments about people trashing Eric DaCosta. But this year, he certainly drafted the, I mean, that squad he's got. We'll see how Jabo yeah. turns out as well. But I mean, that's that's the question. When a Jabo comes back, because he's coming, and it, yeah. it's, it's not long. Yeah. When he comes back, what's his snaps going to look like then? Like, yeah. are we going to start seeing this guy? On, on like punt and kickoff coverage like is right. he gonna is, is he gonna drop to that but I I will say this as a Ravens fan it's a good problem to have Jimbo yeah for sure I mean how long has it been that since we've been in this situation like this where we're like oh we got guys that are producing and we don't need a guy who maybe is in water too deep for him this early in his career which is the way I'm I'm deciding to optimistically look at it right yeah, yeah. um we don't absolutely need him to to play bigger than he's able to play, you know, um, and, or to fill bigger shoes than he's able to right now. So yeah, it's been a while since we've been able to say that, wouldn't you? I mean, we were dependent on guys that, you know, God rest his soul. We were dependent on Jalen Ferguson, right. And, and and the crew, right. Like, um, which was a scary proposition, of course, going into the season and, and the tides have, have changed for the better for the Baltimore Ravens in the pass rushing, uh, category. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good problem to have. You're absolutely right. But really what it comes down to and what we want to know from you guys, it sounds like, I think Glenn and I both agree on this. adafi has got to do more. He's got to be better. Has right? To. I think Glenn is, is a little more worried than I am based on his development. I'm, I'm maybe giving him a little longer leash or a little bit more of a pass right now, which is funny because I feel like it's usually the other way around. Yeah, usually you're the more emotional, quick. But, I mean, I just, I'm going by the eye test, man. When yeah, I look I at you. him. He goes up. He looks like a rock'em sock'em robot. He's straight up and down. Stiff. Has no bend. Doesn't get up under the arm. Has no speed takeoff. And when he gets it locked in with a with a tackle, he gets stuck in their belly button. Jim, yeah, it's night night. Yeah, yeah. And the frustrating part is we've seen him in spots be really good. Well, I mean, you don't run a four three forty and not have explosiveness somewhere inside of you. It's just 
Why doesn't it show on game day? I, I don't understand it. Yeah, well, Adafe, we know you watch the show, so mm -hmm. um, you know, work on the band, work on getting and under please, the guy's arm. Prove me wrong. Please. Because I, I I threw out the B word earlier, and it, not not that B word, bust is the word I'm talking about. And I hope and pray that I am completely wrong because the Ravens can't afford to whiff that big on a first round pick. Absolutely uh, not. Especially not for the, the future edge. of this franchise. Yeah, not for the future of this franchise, and certainly not for the way that we don't go out and spend on free agents. So, yep. um, yeah, let us know what you guys think. Are you as concerned as Glenn? Are you ready to give him a little bit of a pass and and uh, just ride these vets at the end of the season? I, I feel like I'm kind of in the middle, but certainly I'm, I'm more giving him a pass. Let us know what your thoughts are on Adafi Owe um, and the return of David Ajabo, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll talk to you guys soon. See you. Yesterday does not matter. You're looking forward to today. I'm looking forward to being a Raven. What are they getting? Everything out of me. They're going to get a Super Bowl out of me. Believe that.